really talking to you today about a thought that the Lord gave me. Time has made a change in me. And it's actually an old song some of you might remember. Uh, and Diane, did you hand out those papers? I've got some uh, copies of my outline if any of you want one. Some of you may want it, some may not. But if you do, just take one and then pass them on. But uh, time has made a change since my childhood day. Many of my friends have gone away. Some I never more in this life shall see. Time has made a change in me. In my childhood day, I was well and strong. I could climb the hillside all day long. I am not today what I used to be. Time has made a change in me. But I'm here to tell you today that God's good. Amen. And he's still working on me. Praise the Lord. But we're on a journey. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. Our journey in life and how that our life changes so with age and how that we still need to be close to God and serve him. But most women's pocketbooks are kind of like our lives, aren't they? I noticed uh, that young lady had a little bit of everything in her life. She had duct tape and Lysol spray and all that good stuff. And I thought, wow, that's how our pocketbooks are most of the time. We got everything crammed in them. And if we don't have enough room in one, we'll go buy us a bigger one, won't we, and put it in there. But our lives are kind of like pocketbooks. Uh, and I want to just kind of go with years of life here as I talk today not really knowing what I'm talking about when it comes to years of life, just kind of going by my own experience. Uh, we'll be talking about that. But a, a little jingle that people used to say was, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Never time for anything much when you're younger years or when you've just gotten married. And I'm going to just say ages 20 to 40 there because I don't really know about you girls. It seems like any more women are getting married at a later age than they used to. But when I was a young woman, I got married at 19 years old. And, uh, you know, you begin to have children and you, your life begins to change from the days that you were younger. And you have, you find that you've got a lot more on your shoulder than you had before. And there, it just seems like everything's kind of so busy that you find yourself caught up in things and never having time for the things you really want to accomplish in life sometimes. But we need to slow down and take uh, time for God always. But... There's only 24 hours in a day. You can't make more hours. God gave us 24 hours, so you can't make more. So you got to take what the Lord's given you and use them wisely. But at the age of 20 to 24, I've got a little comment, beat the clock. It seems like we're always trying to beat the clock. If you've got small children coming up, you're always, seems like you're always running those kids everywhere. I've seen, I used to work with uh, girls that most of them were younger than me, and they had children in dance, they had children in ball games, they had children here and there, and they were always running, never having time uh, for things that, other than that, just running their children everywhere. But they need to cherish each moment. If you're during that, in that age period, you need to cherish the moments that you have because I know a lot of times I look back on my life and having went through a lot of things with my children, I would give anything to be able to go back and just do it over. But you can't go back and do it over. You got to make it right the first time. So when you got small children coming on and you got things to do with your family, cherish those moments and thank God for those moments that you have with them. James 4, if you want to open your Bibles, if you have your Bible, verses 13 and 14. Talking about cherishing each moment, uh, I have some pictures of my boys when they were little, and I, there's two I especially always like to look at. One's my uh, older son in a little old swimming pool out in the backyard when he was little, all stretched out. And my second one, climbing a rail on my front porch. Those are just pictures I love. And, I, and when I look at them, I think that, that was just so many years ago, but it seems like yesterday because time goes so fast. We don't, we don't realize it sometimes, but time is so fast, and we just have to take it as it comes, girls. Uh, James 4, 13 and 14 says, Come now, you who say, this is the new King James Version, I believe, today or tomorrow we will go to such a city. Uh, we will buy... We will go to such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes 
away. And that's how her life is. Ginger said her life was going good, and then before she knew it, something tragic happened to her. My life has gone good many times, and then something tragic would happen to me. But I'm here to tell you today that God's still God, and he's still good. And I appreciate the goodness of God, because if it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't be here today. But I thank him for his amazing grace in my life. But the ages 20 to 40, to me, was one of the most... Uh, busy times in my life because you've got your kids, you try to work. Most of us work anymore, don't we? We try to work, we try to take care of our families, we try to take care of our children, and it's hard. But somehow we get through those years, and God gives us the grace to do it. Um, but you need to cherish each moment, whether or not you realize it, when you feel like you could pull your hair out or when you feel like you're all nervous and aggravated with your children, stop and thank God gave me those children, and I'm thankful to have them, and I just, I just praise God for them. But they grow up so fast, they're gone before you know it. Uh, you remember that little old saying that you sang, uh, kids used to say, first come love, and then comes marriage, and here comes... Dying with a baby carriage. That's the way life goes most of the time. You get married, you have children, and then you begin your life together and work hard. Uh, but it's very easy to get your eyes off of Jesus during this time. There's another little song that says, Take a little time in the morning, and you'll feel better all day. Take a little time out for Jesus to get down on your knees and pray. And how many of you women can testify when you take time for Jesus, everything goes better throughout the whole day, doesn't it? I mean, it does. It's just like, you know, if you just give him some time, he'll give you what you need for the day. But we need to always look to him and pray and ask him for direction. But we don't need to get caught up in the life's rat race, so to speak, because uh, we get so busy that we leave God out. We don't want to ever leave God out. Uh, Luke 21, verse 34 says this, Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And that day comes on you unexpectedly or unawares. How many of you are looking for Jesus to return? Yeah. We want to keep our eyes focused on his return and looking for him to come back. I was talking to uh, my sister-in-law. She, she has one daughter, and she always loved to go to church. And then she married a man that I always left to go to God's house and worship. And they've got three children. They're busy. She's a nurse, and he's a truck driver, and they're always busy. And I saw Marie the other day, and we were talking about church. And I said, where is Renee going to church now? And she said, they're not going to church. They're so tired. How many of you know you get tired? Uh, they're so tired, they, they kind of stay home and just rest on Sundays. But my goodness, there's no way to, we need to stop and rest for a while because Jesus could come and we could be left behind. But we want to not let the cares of this world catch us and keep us from seeing Jesus come back because even though you're busy, take time for Jesus. Uh, they're so tiring sometimes. If you're like me, I used to get so tired when I would be running here and there and trying to work and trying to do all the things that I need to do. But I always had to take time for my Lord because he's been good to me, and I appreciate him. If it hadn't been for Jesus, I couldn't have made it, but he's brought me a long way, praise God, and I appreciate him. But they're busy years. 20 to 40 are busy years, but we sure don't want to leave Jesus out. Uh, but life goes on. You might be... Today, feeling like you can't make it, but it's going to go on unless you die and leave this old world. It's going to go on. It's going to continue. And the age is 40 to 55. You've already left those years behind that you've got your children growing most of the time. You've got something else going on in your life, but you're still busy. You're still going to be busy. It's never going to leave you. You've got a little bit more free time, you think. So what are you going to do with that free time? Uh, we, we're going to find something to fill our days, aren't we? We're going to find something to fill up that time. Uh, we find ourselves with enough time for a husband maybe that we haven't had for a long time. Uh, and maybe we start courting him again. And, you know, that's good, isn't it? I guess. I guess it is. <laughs> start your courtship over and have a good time with your husband for a change after your kids are out of the house and gone and you have a little bit more time. You start having fun together. Uh, you and your husband, that's the way it should be. And there's nothing wrong with that at all, is there? How many of you know there's nothing wrong with that? Amen. Amen. Uh, but sometimes what happens in these years, people get so busy 
uh, doing things, one thing or another, they start leaving out God. I never have understood that, but they, they start leaving out God. Uh, things they miss for years, they think now I can have time to do all these things. I can, I can go camping, I can go traveling, I can do this, I can do that. And sometimes what happens, they leave out, they leave out the best part and they take Sunday to do their thing. But I'm here to tell you we need to worship God. Jesus is coming and we need to be in his house praising him while we have time to praise him. Uh, we might miss him. We might miss his return if we got our eyes on everything else. There's nothing wrong with doing those things. It's just you've got to get your priorities in order and know where you're heading. The time we might miss with our Lord are precious times. They're, they're wonderful times. And they're more important times than anything else that you could ever have in this world with anyone else. The time you spend with Jesus. Uh, the time you give him. You always need to take time for Jesus and give him your heart and life and serve him with vigor. Uh, talking about taking time out for Jesus, uh, where is our hearts today? You know, we, we've got a lot of things going on in the world, uh, but where is our heart? Uh, in Luke 10, verses 38 through 42, I'm going to read that for you. Uh, we need to always make sure our heart's in the right place. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. This is talking about Mary and Martha, and uh, Jesus and his disciples had come to their hometown, to Bethany. And in verse 38 it says, Now it came to pass as they went that they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was coming about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Better therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I've always liked what Jesus said to Martha when she came to him. Have you ever said some, that to somebody when you got a little bit aggravated with them? You kind of mentioned her name twice. You'll say, Martha, Martha. I said, well, I think he must have said it. I don't know that. But he told Martha, you know, when she came and she began to complain. I remember back when I was younger, uh, women don't do it so much anymore, but when they would have company come to their house, uh, they would start cooking. They'd just start cooking to feed them. I never did know why they did that. But my mother-in-law, every time somebody came to her house, she would start cooking a meal. She didn't care uh, who it was or where they came from. She'd start getting stuff out and cooking. I reckon she wanted them to leave happy and full, I guess. But anyway, she, she would start cooking a meal for them. And uh, that's the way women used to do. But you don't see that much anymore, do you? What do we usually do now? Take them out to eat? <laughs> That's what we normally do. But anyway, uh, people, and I kind of thought in my mind maybe that's what Martha was doing. She had company come to her house, and here she was going to have a special guest that she'd invited, and she wanted to make sure that everything was just right for Jesus. And she began to prepare a meal probably, and I don't know what else she was doing, but she got aggravated at her sister. How many of you women ever get aggravated at your sisters in the Lord or sisters at home? <laughs> it's easy to do sometimes, but... But Mary, Mary wasn't interested in what Martha was doing, was she? Wasn't a bit interested in it. Because the Bible says that Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Uh, Martha was much busy with her work, doing her thing, you know, trying to get everything ready for Jesus, the company that she had. But Mary stopped what she was doing and she sit at the feet of Jesus. And I love what he said. He said, but one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Uh, ladies, we get so busy sometimes with just doing everything we have to do at home, plus working, plus taking care of things. We forget to take time and sit at the feet of Jesus. That's the most important thing I could tell you today is take time 
to sit with Jesus. Don't let your lives or your pocketbooks become so cluttered that you leave him out completely, but take time for Jesus. Ginger put a Bible in her purse, and, and uh, uh, I think something else containing, uh, she had something else in there pertaining to scriptures. The nails. The nails. Uh, we need to always have Jesus with us wherever we go. Uh, we might not be able to literally put him in our pocketbooks, but we can sure carry him with us, can't we? Um, don't get your life so cluttered up that you lose vision of sitting at the feet of Jesus. Uh, what a blessing that is just to sit with him and talk with him and listen to him. When we pray, we're going to listen to We're not just going to talk, but we're going to listen to Jesus. And we may not have him with us here right now, but we've got him in our hearts, don't we, in our spirits. And we could sit at his feet and talk to him, just like Mary was taking in every word Jesus said. We can listen to our Lord and hear what he's saying to us, and we can be blessed. But Mary uh, sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. What a word Jesus tells us, and that's why we need so desperately to have the word of God hidden in our hearts and hear the word of God every day, reading it and applying it to our lives. Uh, years passed. Women did a lot of things they don't do anymore. But one thing they still do is carry pocketbooks, except for Betty, my sister. She never carries her pocketbook anymore. She always carries a billfold. But we need to always make sure we got Jesus going with us, don't we? Take time out for Jesus. Um, our cluttered lives, let Jesus have part of those lives. Don't ever leave him out. Uh, don't ever forget to sit with Jesus and, and just take time with him. Now, if you will, turn over to Luke chapter 12 with me. We're going to talk about laying up treasures. Uh, how many of you like to lay up treasures in this world? <coughs> Nothing wrong with it. I'm talking about things you can buy with money <laughs> or money. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it if you use it the right way. But... We're going to talk about laying up treasures in Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. It's talking about Jesus. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain man, uh, a certain rich man, excuse me, brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there I will bestow all my fruits and goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thou soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Uh, you know, we, we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus all the time, people. Uh, I, I mentioned a lot of things in my past because i am retired now from the job that I had for so long. And the girls I worked with were always worrying, or this one particular woman was always worrying about making enough money for her future so that when she retired, she'd have to, enough money to do the same things that she was accustomed to while she was working. And so when she retired, she wanted to have enough money to travel and do all these things. But you know what's a sad picture here? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, we're supposed to occupy this world till Jesus comes, and we need to prepare for ourselves and, and take care of ourselves. But what's so sad is a lot of time people lose vision of Jesus and the things that he has laid up for us. Uh, we need to lay up treasures in heaven and not lose sight of what the Lord has for us. Um, in the middle years of life, people start doing that, it seems like. They want to make sure they got enough for retirement, for doing the things they always wanted to do, and for taking little trips and, and going shopping and doing all the things without giving up some of the money that they've got to live on. Uh, but some people get consumed with that stuff and leave out Jesus entirely. They, they think, boy, I'm going to have plenty of years left to serve the Lord. I'm going to enjoy myself while I can because when you get older, sometimes you don't feel like getting out and doing a lot of things. But I'm going to just enjoy myself while I can. But they begin to leave out the best part. They begin to leave out Jesus. And they get consumed with getting enough things to or enough money, laying up treasures that they're going to be able to have a good future on. Uh, 
in Proverbs, Solomon says something about an ant. Now, there's nothing wrong with laying up stuff for the future, but we've just got to remember who's important. In Proverbs, Solomon said, in Proverbs 6, I think it is, it said to consider the ant. Uh, he provides supplies in the summer and gathers food in the harvest. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with taking care of yourself for the future. But when we lose sight of Jesus and when we give ourselves over to things that we want in life and we give ourselves to making money to put in the bank so that we'll have enough for the future, there's really nothing wrong with that either as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. Put him first. Consider his desires for your life first. We'll be all right. But in Luke 12, verse 20, again, it said, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will these things be which you have provided? Uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds, do we? Does anybody know what their tomorrow holds? Uh, tomorrow, we don't know what's going to come down the road tomorrow. We don't have a promise in this world. The only promise that we have, really, if we know Jesus Christ, is that we're going to make it to heaven. We don't have a promise in this world of another tomorrow. But the Word of God said this said to this man, he said, you're a fool, more or less, because, you know, whose money's all this going to be if you're, if you're dead and gone? Who's all these possessions going to be if you're dead and gone? They're not going to go to heaven with you. I heard this little lady say one time, she said, I, she works for a very wealthy family, and she told them, she said, you can't take all this stuff in a wagon behind you to, to heaven. You're not going to take it with you, folks. You've got to make sure that you've laid up treasures in heaven. And if you've done that, you're going to be okay. But this rich man was so uh, overtaken by his riches that he tore down his barns and he built greater. Uh, you know, some people are never satisfied with what they have. But my goodness, we need to love Jesus first, don't we? And then all these other things will be in the right order. Uh, but your handbag could be stuffed with money today. I don't know what you got in your pocketbook. Mine certainly isn't stuffed with money. Maybe some of you are, you know. Maybe you got plenty in there. But your handbag should never be so full that you leave out Jesus, wherever you are, wherever you go. Because only what's done for Christ is going to last. Don't have any promises, do we? Matthew 6, 20 and 21 says this. Let's lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven where moths nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if you go on down to verse 33 in that chapter, it says, Let's seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness to seek first the kingdom of God. Um, we need to take time for Jesus. Not be so consumed with possessions, with money that we lose sight of Jesus. And uh, I'm telling you, girls, whatever you do for the Lord is worth it all, isn't it? The treasures that you're laying up for Jesus is worth it all. Uh, you may not have much in this world's goods, but just think about what you got tomorrow with Jesus. It's worth it all, isn't it? It's worth it all. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is time is winding up. How many of you realize that Jesus is almost coming? Almost time for Jesus. And this time uh, frame that we've lived in all these years, the time that people have always said, Jesus is coming back, I believe it's just about to wind up, don't you? I believe we're going to see Jesus sooner than we think. But we're going to move on down the road. In Matthew 10, 22, says, But he endures to the end. The latter part of that says, The same shall be saved. Uh, he talks and tells them some things. And he tells them you might be hated in this world. You might be despised in this world. But he says, those that endure to the end, the same will be saved. we got to go all the way, girls. But he told them they would be hated. And sometimes people don't like us, do they? But be assured Jesus loves you today. Until Jesus comes, we need to hold up the standard that God has put in our lives. We need to praise him and honor him. <coughs> in Matthew 5, 13, the Bible tells us that we are the salt of the earth. And we are the light of the world. Uh, and he goes on to tell us that let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Uh, if we do that, if we let our light shine before men, we're doing what God wants us to do. If we're living for him, uh, no matter who comes against us in life, 
They might not like us. They might not appreciate us. But always remember that your Father loves you. And no matter who comes against you or what obstacles you might face in life or what kind of troubles you might come across in life, uh, you just got to make it home. I, that's what I want to say. You just got to get all the way home. And uh, how many of you are looking to get home one day? All the way, Jesus. Uh, you can't turn around and go back. You got to keep going. And uh, you can't get there any other way except through the blood of Jesus. Because life's a journey, people. It's a journey that we're on. And we start traveling from the time we're born in this world until we leave this old world. And what we do for Jesus is what's going to last and what's going to count because Jesus is coming. In Matthew 24, verse 36 through 44, if you want to flip over there. The Bible says, but of that day and hour no man knoweth, not the angels, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be gathering at the meal, or grinding at the meal, and one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watched the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Uh, we're on a journey. We need to be looking for Jesus, don't we? And... Don't have your lives or your handbags so full that you don't look for Jesus. Don't have so much going on in your life that you forget who he is and what he's doing and that he's coming again. Uh, several years back, uh, the Holy Ghost was singing this little song through one of my sisters, and uh, the Lord gave me these words, and I wrote them down. But it says, we're on a journey, a journey long. We are on a journey home. Keep your eyes wide open and your garments white. We are on a journey home. And I'm going to try to sing it, and if y'all can help me, if I can sing it, okay? Just excuse my voice. We are on a journey, a journey long. We are on a journey home. Keep your eyes wide open and your garments white. We are on a journey home. We are on a journey, a journey long. We are on a journey home. Keep your eyes wide open and your garments white. We are on a journey home. We're on this journey called life, and we have to carry things with us. But praise God, we can make it with Jesus just to give him everything. And don't keep nothing hidden in that pocketbook in your life away from Jesus, but give him everything.